In, ja, in Isaiah 50, uh, 54, um, think of verse 1, 54. Isaiah 54. Can we just put it there? Uh, may nin atan passage, uh, central text in the new life, uh, and atan much more, and also uh, <clears throat> preparing us, brothers and sisters, for what God has in store. Sing, O barren woman, you who never bore a child, burst into song. Shout for joy, you who never born in, who, who were ne never in labor, because more, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. Enlarge, enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Tell someone, do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. Everybody say, strengthen your stakes. Strengthen your foundation, that is. Next verse. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will disp dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. Next verse, please. Do not be afraid. Tell someone, do not be afraid. Sing, hey, do not be afraid uh, to be seated beside me. I'm okay. I'm good. You will not suffer, uh, suffer shame. Do not fear disgrace, for you will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. Next verse. For your name, for your husband, for your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is his, is your Redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. Father, we just want to thank you for your word. Bless our lives today and change us, transform us with your word forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Well, I want to share today tonight uh, about something that is foundational, something that I believe, I, I've noticed that since this morning, um, it is more, the, the, the things that we will be share, I'll be sharing to you this evening is, is more of a, an instruction from the Lord. This is much uh, more of a, uh, uh, like a table talk tonight. It's like sitting on a table. Imagine yourself being in the table of the Lord. The Lord has prepared a table before us and He's going to feed us with His Word tonight. So this is like a family talk. Amen? So don't, don't, don't expect tonight for uh, a preaching, brothers and sisters. I might preach somewhere along the way. I might teach a little bit. But this is more instructional tonight because I believe what we will talk about is foundational. This is strengthening our foundation or strengthening our stakes. Uh, if you've been here since the first Sunday of the year, we've talked about this uh, a lot. I believe God wants to prepare us for the things that He has prepared for us. I will say it again. I believe God wants to prepare us, and what's happening really in the first month, in the first quarter of this year, is more of preparation, setting up the uh, atmosphere, a sort of getting us ready for what God has prepared. So, you know, first things first, right? Amen. If you're going to build a building, you, you don't start in the third floor. You start in the ground, you know, in the, in the, uh, in the foundation. Uh, you want to, to make sure it's strong and sturdy and it will last the test of times and test of, or, or whatever storm you may face along the way. So first things first. Talk to someone beside you saying, hey, yeah, first things first. Let's talk about foundation. This is the first month of the year and this is the first quarter of the year. We will be talking today about how to strengthen our foundation. All right? Strengthen our foundation. Anybody excited about this? Salamat itong alili mga kabugos, mga kabugot, mga excited about strengthening their foundation. I'm going to preach for you. I'm going to preach to you this message about, you know, being prepared for the things that He has prepared for us. There's no doubt, brothers and sisters, God designed a life of much more for us. In John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said, you know, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you might have life. And in, in, in the Amplified Version, it says that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. That's the concept of much more according to Jesus himself. Amen? In John chapter 15, still in the Amplified Version, Jesus said, I am the true vine and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes that it will bear more fruit. Everybody say more fruit even richer and finer fruit, you are already clean because of the word which I have given you, the things, the teachings that I have discussed with you. Remain in me, Jesus said. Abide in me, and I will remain in you, or I will abide in you, just as no branch can bear fruit of its, by itself without remaining in the vine. Jesus is teaching us here 
the importance of connections or staying connected with God. Amen? It is, it is uh, wisdom, brothers and sisters. The wisdom of the Lord tells us that if you want fruits in your life, you cannot, you know, separate yourself from God. You have to be, stay with the Lord. You have to stay connected with God. Amen? I think that's wisdom. Amen? Magpabilin di dahag ginoo. Gusto ni prutas. If you want to harvest, if you want to see the manifestation of what the Lord has promised, you've got to have the ability to wait upon the Lord and the fulfillment of His promise. You have to stay with God. Amen? So it says... Um, you are already clean because of the word which I have given you, the teachings that I have discussed with you. Remain and in me and I will remain in you just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit, producing evidence of your faith unless, everybody say unless, you remain in me. I am the vine, Jesus said, and you are the branches. Are you getting the point? I think we're seeing it. Jesus is repeating it, you know. Kadamo na niya ginbalik. You are the, I am the vine. You are the branches. You have to stay with me. You have to abide. Unless you remain in me, I am the vine. Uh, you are the branches. The one who remains in me, and I in him bears much fruit. Everybody say much fruit. Again, Jesus is repeating the concept, the idea of much more. I want you to know that the idea of much more did not come from me. It came right from, you know, from the mouth of Jesus. John chapter ten, John chapter fifteen. Jesus telling us about the idea of much more. The concept of much more does not only focus on increase in terms of numbers, it is also focusing on increase in terms of quality. I would like to encourage you that this year, don't just go for more, go for much. Go for quality. The Lord just doesn't just want to complicate your life or He doesn't want to just add to you. He wants you to have the ability to enjoy what He gives to you. Amen? It's one thing to have things. It's something else to enjoy it. It's one thing to be blessed with something. It, it's something else to live out a quality life. Amen? May, may panalangin ng Diyos in terms of uh, tawag hindi. Hindi nila pag-add ha aton kinabuhi. Hindi nila pag-padamo mga kapatid. Kundi ang kalidad ang aton kinabuhi. Everybody say quality. Praise the Lord for the um, quality. Hallelujah. Anybody thankful about the plan, the heart of God for us? Much more, hallelujah. So John chapter 10 and John chapter 15 tells us that it is the will of God, it is God's design for all of us na maka-experience kita and much more. So this is not just about a theme. Uh, itong kada tuig na para may nakita mapag-usapan ng new life. These are truths from the scripture that God wants to fulfill and aton mga kinabuhi. Yan ang atuig. Amen? Diritso kita someone, let's go to someone don't look at the person beside. I'm not talking about the someone beside. I'm talking about the some one. <laughs> someone, thinking on verse 1 to 6. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, or in his word, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. Everybody say fruit. Here again, the Lord is talking about fruit. Whose leaf also shall not wither. Amen. And dahon ni mo mga kapatid, hindi rin nalalaya. Kundi may presko ni mo kinabuhi. There's freshness in your life. Hallelujah. And whatever He does shall prosper. There's blessing, you know, and what, we, with what you do. The evidence of the presence of God in your life. You are being prospered in the things that you do. Amen. I believe every one of us wants to prosper this year. There are some things that needs to be prepared an aton part uh, to get us ready for the things that God has prepared for us. Let's chew on this a little bit. God has prepared things for us. No eye has seen, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and starting from verse 9 to 11, no eye has seen, no ear, no ear has heard, no mind has ever conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. How many of you know that God has prepared things for you? Specifically for this year. For you, for your family, and uh, hallelujah, Amen. The Lord has prepared things for me and for you. Come on, just think about that. The Lord has prepared things for you. And I'm telling you, this is not something, this is not something, brothers and sisters, basta basta la. This is not just uh, little tiny things that's not relevant to you. These are very important things. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has ever conceived the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. Um, let's go back. 
Whatever he does prospers. Whatever he does prospers. The ungodly are not so, the Richani kitang at verse 4, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the, of the ungodly shall perish. So this entire passage is talking about the two different ways, okay? The way of the righteous and the way of the wicked. And it's also tell, telling us the difference between uh, who you hang out with. Like if you hang out with the wicked, these are the possibilities that can happen to you. If you hang out with the right people, you're going to end up with this uh, exciting promise that says whatever he does prospers. But you've got to choose, brothers and sisters, from the onset, from the beginning, you've got to make a decision. I'm going to walk in the path of God. I'm encouraging you this year, brothers and sisters, to make a decision to walk in the ways of God. A lot of us, sometimes we struggle in what is the will of God. Uh, growing up in the Lord, uh, spiritually speaking, because physically, it's obvious, mga kapatuan, I don't know, but growing in the Lord, you know, it's always been like, like people, church people, always been our struggle, always been like, you know, uh, we wrestle with the idea of what is the will of God. Well, first, first of all, where's my Bible? Okay, my Bible is here. Uh, the Word of God is the will of God. God has searched the will of God. It's, it's uh, all the New Testament and 66 books. So there's a lot here, brothers and sisters, to discover. Promises of God is loaded with the promises of God. You're going to discover the heart of God here, the wisdom of God here, the principles of God here. So if you want to walk in the will of God, you've got to go to the Word of God. And it's always been a struggle about, you know, the general will of God is here. But there are also specific things or sp the specific will of God, which is not, you know, this is not, it's not clear here. For example, who you're going to marry. God had given you provision in the general will of God about the standards that you're supposed to have in choosing who to marry. But it did not tell you specifically the name of who you will marry. So that is the specific will of God. But if you walk in the general will of God or in the ways of God, most uh, mas, mas dako aiton probability that you're going to walk in the specific will of God if you walk in the general will of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is this. If you choose to walk in the ways of God, ultimately, you're going to walk in the will of God. Stop struggling about, Lord, I don't know specific talaga. I don't know specific. Keep tracking with God. Walk with Jesus. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Read your Bible. These are basic things that you need to do. This is doing the will of God by walking in the ways of God. If you walk in the path of God, God's guidance will be there. God's direct provision will be there. God's wisdom will be available there. But if you track your own path, you will be responsible for yourself. Although God is redemptive, although God is rescuing, but there will be consequences. Amen? But we are being advised to walk in the ways of God. The ways of God are uh, clearly spelled out in the Word of God. You want to know the ways of God? You can discover it here. About being a parent, being a husband, being a wife, being a Christian, being an, a godly businessman, being a, a, a godly single person, you find it here. How, how you deal in terms of relationships, how you go about in terms of your singleness, your single life, how you go about brothers and sisters with, uh, you know, uh, pursuits in life or whatever. You want to walk in the will of God? Don't, don't struggle. Just decide to walk in the ways of God. Ultimately, you're going to bump into the specific will of God. Amen? Does that make sense to you? So, balik kita. So, this Psalm 1 is interesting because uh, the book of Psalm is in the center of the Bible. If you just, like, so, garunin mo itong Biblia, mga kabutan. Itbot nga ito, book of Psalm. The first, you, you don't have chapters, so it's Psalm. It's, these are songs, okay? So, Psalm 1, that's why you call it Psalm 1. You don't say Psalm chapter 1. Psalm 1, it's song. It's a song. And in the beginning of the psalm is blessed. The word, the first word that was used is blessed. To be blessed means to be happy, to be fortunate, to be prosperous, and to be enviable. Now, these are, you know, the descriptions of what is a blessed person or who is 
a blessed person. A blessed person is someone who, who uh, is described in the Bible as a, pro, a person who is prosperous. Mainuswagon nga tao. And, and a person who is enviable. Ginkakaawaan. Uh, sa may naiaawa, yung mga kabutuhan. Part ito yan, package. It's part of the, <laughs> it goes with the territory. You want to be a blessed person? People will desire, oh, wow, ano lang yung sekreto. But some, some people will be mad too. So some will be glad, but some will be mad. Anyway, so balik kita. Blessed, blessed is the man, blessed is the man, uh, amplified version please, just the uh, blessed, the blessedness, happy, happy, malipayon, joyful, happy, fortunate. Diri ni buinas nga fortunate. Kabubuinas ni mo. Diri ni chance mga kabagtuan. Is uh, fortunate is like, man, you're blessed. It's one way to say you are blessed. Prosperous and enviable is the man who walks and lives not. It's, it's really interesting to me that the Bible starts calling a person blessed and describing it by a person who knows his boundary by saying, uh, I, I, uh, and iya pagka describe it on blessed person is not only uh, by way of what he allows into his life, but also what he does not allow into his life. In his life. Meaning, brothers and sisters, nga, it, it is showing us that a, a person who is blessed, a person who is prosperous, a person who is fortunate, is a person who knows how to politely say no to some things. Can I just tell you right now, hinintimprano pang apartit akon message, you cannot say yes to everything this year. You cannot just say yes to everything. Uh, if you plan to live a freestyle Christianity, so ni mo maging freestyle, whatever, whatever will be, will be, or anything goes. There's no, no such thing as uh, Christiano, nga, everything, you, you take things as they come. You've got to be choosy when it comes to some things. I'm talking about friends, talking about people who hang out with. Blessed is the man who walks not. I said blessed is the man who walks not. The Bible says, blessed is the man who walks not. Walks not in what? In the counsel, advice, and ungodly people, following their advice, their plans, and purposes. Nor stands submissive and inactive in the path where sinners walk, nor sits down to relax and rest with the scornful and the mockers gather. Blessed is the man who walks not. Nor stand in the path of sinners or sit in the seat of scornful, but his delight, his delight, but his delight instead, instead, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree. He shall be like a tree planted by, planted by, planted by the rivers of water that brings forth as a result, forth fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. One of the, you know, of the manifestations of being healthy, your leaf will not wither. And, and you, you bear, bear forth fruit in season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Admittedly, the first time, or a, a, mo, a lot of times that I have read this, I could not believe reading this. I said, Lord, is this real? Like whatever he does prospers? If you jump into this verse right away without considering the first few verses, you're going to miss the message. Because you can't just go to the result without, uh, without going first and foremost not to hit on uh, the boundaries and the, the, the disciplines you need to set up before you can experience all these things. To just further explain that to you, I have divided this passage into four parts. Okay, upat kaparte. I want to talk to you today about the, the essentials for your much more. Your much more essentials. The essentials, the basic things you need to prepare, the basic foundational things you need to strengthen this year. If you are going to expect and believe God for your much more, there are some things you need to do on your end. And imo part, your part is to prepare. God already prepared the things, whatever He had prepared for us, but we need to prepare for the things that the Lord has prepared for us. Amen? You cannot be, you don't want to be caught unprepared this year uh, for what God has in store for you. This passage is divided into four parts, okay? Number one, parameter. Number two, pursuit. Number three, positioning. And number four, progress. The media team will show it, will provide it. If you want to just write it down. Parameter is found in the blessed is the man who walks not. 
speaks about the boundaries that you need to set up, the discipline, spiritual disciplines you need to develop. Amen? As I said, you cannot just say, to, say yes to everything. You got to learn to be choosy when it comes to what honors God and what dishonors God. You've got to be, be choosy when it comes to the things that you will focus on or things that you will pursue and the things you're not supposed to pursue. Amen? So, parameter, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinner, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Number two, pursuit. But in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in season, whose leaf shall not, leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does prospers. Let's focus on, uh, let's underline, and let's just discuss a little bit about the in his law, he meditates day and night. Whatever you fill your system with, uh, Shapes your mindset. Amen. Shapes your paradigm, hinkinabuhi, the way you see the world. You know, your meditation is, uh, is it, it affects brothers and sisters the way you see things and your perception in life, and your perception will shape your decisions or will, will, will influence your decisions. So these are things are connected to each other. Amen. Parameter, pursuit, in his law, he meditates day and night. Number three, positioning. He shall be like a tree planted by. Everybody say planted by. Planted by or is dependent upon or is positioned in. Planted by the streams of living water. Living water uh, speaks about the Holy Spirit in our lives. His guidance, His direction, His infilling. Amen. You need, how many of you know it's very important that we are filled and led by the Holy Spirit this year? Salamat ang ginoh itong underwhelming amens. But you know what? You can do better than that. We need the Holy Spirit this year. He is our helper. The Bible says, Jesus said, uh, it is for your advantage that I go away because if I will not go away, the Spirit, the, the helper will not come. And he speaks about the Holy Spirit and his ministry in our lives for God's people in the new covenant. Jesus said, you need help. So I'm going to send a helper who is exactly like me. Amen? Another comforter. So he will comfort, he will guide, he will be your standby. He stands by you to try to... To, to be able to help you, enable you, show you things to come. Aren't you thankful for the presence and the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life? Amen? Can we give God praise for that? I mean, Jesus wants to see to it that we will, be, we will not look like orphans. In fact, He said it to His disciples. I don't want to leave you like orphans. Amen? God wants to take care of us and He wants to ensure that we succeed in this life, that we fulfill God's purpose for us. And so He has given us somebody that will help us in the person of the Holy Spirit. Are we acknowledging Him? Amen. Are we talking to Him? Are we listening to His advice? Amen. We need, we need the Holy Spirit this year more than ever. If, we, if you needed the Holy Spirit in 2018, oh my goodness, this is 2019. Amen. How many of you know that higher levels, bigger devils? <laughs> Amen. So gusto ni mo new things, big things from God. You've got to prepare for it, brothers and sisters. And let me tell you, in and of yourself, you, do, you cannot handle the pressure. Part of the enlargement that must happen in your life is we need to have an increased capacity how to handle pain. Pain is a part of life. Kasaring niyo, pura la blessings, mga kaputuan. May pain. You gotta deal with some pains. In this, if you're stretched, if you're gonna stretch, brothers and sisters, you feel the pain, you feel the discomfort, discomfort because anytime, brothers and sisters, you wanna go to the next level in God, there will be a stretching. And it will, it will challenge you. It will challenge the way you handle that level. It will challenge. There's, there's some new things that you're going to have to deal with that you did not have in the lower level. Amen? Oh, you were praying for us, Lord, give me a job. And when you got the job, now you have to pray to the Lord, keep me safe here. Preserve me, oh Jesus. So you're not just thinking about, Lord, I, I need, you need to protect me, God. So you know, may trabaho ka na mga Damo na naasa lahat. So, oh God, help me, Lord God, be generous. So, it increases, brothers and sisters, as you move forward in the different, different, uh, different levels and degrees in your journey with the Lord. So now you have to pray for self, being, uh, uh, being generous and being unselfish and being a responsible person to manage whatever God has given you and, and all these other things. You want more? You're going to have to grow also in quality. Amen. Grow in character, grow in your heart, brothers and sisters. You cannot just be asking for more without asking the Lord to grow you also as a person to be able to handle the more. 
In Jesus' name, somebody's going to get it. Amen. Positioning is everything. Your proximity, physical distance, how close you are, uh, also determines ultimately your intimacy with God. You want to be near God? Don't miss church. That's practical. You want to be intimate with God this year? Put your Bible in your car. Because I know you're going to get busy. You've got to be intentional. Amen? Amen. Come on. You, wanna, you want God to preserve you from temptations? Hang out with the right crew. It will be hard for you to sin when you're surrounded by believers. Amen. How many of you know this wisdom right there? Blessed is the man who walks not. And if you're going to take the positive side of it, blessed is the man who walks with the right people. The people who are not ungodly, but they're godly. Amen. Blessed is the man who walks with encouragers. Blessed is the man who walks with believers that goes to new life, Tacloban. Oh, Lord. Salamat ito gino ngayo. Amen. That's a good sign. You're still awake. Amen. So, parameter pursuit positioning. The last part is progress. His leaf shall not wither. He, uh, he who brings forth its, uh, its fruit in season, and whatever he does prospers. I'd like to, to, to tell you, brothers and sisters, that the progress part is a, a part that is a result when you prepare the former. If you, you don't have to worry about progress. It will take care of itself once you decide to prepare what needs to be prepared. I'm talking about if you take care of the foundation, God will take care of your success. God will take care of your promotion. God will take care of your expansion. God will take care of your what? Influence. God will take care about enlarge, you know, here and there. God will take care about you spread to the right, right and to the left. You know, all these things. They're not saying, Lord, I want you to make sure that your foundations are, you know, deep into the ground. You have to be rooted and grounded in God this year. Amen. There will be temptations. There will be trials. There will be testings. So these are not things There will be. Amen. It's not a question of if. It is a question of when. Amen. You will have trials. You will have challenges. You will have oppositions. You will have things you're going to have to deal with. But my question is this. Are, how deep is your foundation? Storms will come. But you have to make sure your, your, your house is built upon the rock, upon Jesus Christ, upon the Word of God, upon the principles of God. You have to be intentional this year. You have to be intentional this year. So you want to be intimate with God? Deal, take care of the proximity part. Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. You want to be intimate with God? Be intentional. Be part of a life group. Kanina, I'm so happy na natin third service, naglilinya dito mga kabugtuan. Di rin magkikita movie. After the service, people were lining up because they want to be part of a life group. Because they understand the progress part it's going to be a, you know, it's, it's going to be a, uh, I don't know, I cannot guarantee that part. If you will not take care of the blessed is the man who walks not. If you don't take care of your parameters, you don't take care of your pursuits and your positioning, forget about progress. The idea of much more will just be a wish. A wish. If you are not going to prepare the things that you need to prepare. Prepare the foundation and God will take care of the building. Amen? Amen? Be rooted and grounded in the Lord. So parameter, pursuit, positioning, progress. Just some things you need to check. You know, as far as parameter and pursuit is concerned, they're closely, you know, uh, connected to each other. Uh, environment. This is very important this year. Check your environment. I want, I want you to look at your own life. Look at your own surrounding. Kita makabugtuan your constant exposure. Uh, just check your usual atmosphere, the voices around you, the people that influences your world. Who do you listen to? Man, we always say this in you like, it's crucial, brothers and sisters. What you hear will have an effect on how you believe. What you believe will have an effect on how you respond to things. Be very careful who you listen to. Be very careful who you travel with in this life. I'm not just talking about acquaintances. I'm talking about you know, associates. I'm talking about people you, you do life with. Yung mga tao, mga kabugtuan, nga patin, mga sekreto ni Mkinabuhi, dito kipapakita na niyo and everything. Be very careful. I'm not saying that you, you don't reach out to people, you don't pray for people, or you don't love, you know, the lost. You pray for them. 
But if you're going to hang out, if you're going to do life with people, I mean, I'm, you're talking about you're doing coffee, having coffee with these people. You talk about spending time talking about them, chatting with these people, and all these things. I'm not talking about, you know, isolating yourself. You are the holier-than-thou attitude. You have this holier-than-thou attitude. Others, everybody's lost, and you are not. Please don't have that kind of attitude. That's just pure arrogance and pride. You have to reach out to the world. We are the salt and light of the earth. Amen? This is not about, the sinners are standing there. That's not. You're taking it out of context. Parameter is knowing who you are supposed to hang out with, the values of the people that you do life with. Amen? Again, tell me who your friends are, and I will tell you mine. No. <laughs> tell me who your friends are, and, and I, this is not, makabuktuan, you know, it's not about uh, uh, fortune telling or something. Tell me who your friends are, and I'm going to give you a hint about your future. It's, man, it doesn't take a genius to understand that your friends will have an effect in the way you see things. So come on, maybe, maybe, just maybe. I said, Lord, I want some new things this year. I want, I, I want to have new things this year. I want to experience new things. Well, you got to decide to do new things. To be with new people. Amen? New wine, new wine skin. New wine, new wine skin. We want new things from God. But we're the old, one, the old we. We're the old us. And so we got to, 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 to have this newness, brothers and sisters of life, with perception and all the other things. Anak tununa? environment, who you walk, where you walk in, who you walk with, who you listen to, who gives you advices, who speaks into your life. Meditation. Does what you feel your system or your mind with affects your thought patterns? Amen? It's very important. Shapes your mindset. Come on. Influences your decisions. Hallelujah. Affects your perceptions. Stirs your heart, your emotion, your expectation. Everything. It will guide your steps, etc., etc., Starts of a good attitude or a bad attitude, depending on who you walk, walk with or who you medit- or what you meditate upon. So, kung ano ang imo ginsusulod, mga kabugtan nga doon imo sistema, will really impact you. Amen? Again, these are basic things. Again, these are things that we do on our end. And at an end, mga kabugtan, God will take care of the rest. He has already prepared things for us, but we got to prepare for the things that God has prepared for us. This is our part. Amen? So, an emo meditation this year will ulti- ultimately become your pursuit. An emo, gin, you know, what, feel, what you fill your mind with, what you fill your heart with, it, it's going to affect everything about you. So, be very careful about your meditation. I, I hope that these are, that you're meditating more upon the word of the Lord. Amen? Positioning is another thing you need to check. Your planting is absolutely necessary, brothers and sisters. You've got to live by the Holy Spirit, live with the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, guided by the Holy Spirit. We need God. We need, we need God to guide us. When you talk about, Giyahe ako, Lord, you're, talk, you're not talking about, you know, God somewhere out there from a distance. We're talking about the person of the Holy Spirit. You know where the Holy Spirit is? He's in the world right now. Scripturally, the Father sits in, the right, he sits in heaven, in the throne. Jesus sits at the right hand. The Holy Spirit has been poured out on the day of Pentecost, and He's still here on the earth. He has not left the earth, and He's trying to help people that will open up to Him. Come on. If you, if you will recognize you need help, the Holy Spirit will gladly help you. Gladly help me. A lot of times, we don't recognize that we need help. So one of the descriptions of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts is He is a standby. Diriya is tambay. He stands by just waiting for you to ask Him. He is so gentle, He will not force His way on you. The Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. One of the symbols of the Holy Spirit is He is a dove. He is like a dove. He is not a dove. So don't, you know, go out there and talk about the Holy Spirit is a bird. No, He's a person. He's not just a power. He has, the, he has a power. He is powerful. But he is a person. He can be grieved. He can speak to you. He can guide you. You know? And he is that still small voice on the inside of you. He's too gentle. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. And for those married people, you have the Holy Spirit on the outside in the person of your wife. 
Kung di ka nga ni mamati ang Holy Spirit on the inside nga gentle, the Holy Spirit will use that Holy Spirit on the outside. And the Holy Spirit on the outside, relentless, mga kapunta. In a good way. In a good way. I love my wife so much. Thank you, Jesus. I think we're going to have a date tonight. Amen. But church, listen, we need the Holy Spirit. Quit living like, listen, listen. I love, I love the way seasoned men of God would put it. Christianity without the Holy Spirit is impossible. Without the Holy Spirit, Christianity is not only difficult, it is impossible. Do you understand even Jesus while he was on earth needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Come on, amen. You remember that when he was baptized in the River Jordan. When John baptized Jesus, the Bible says the Holy Spirit came down like a dove and, and the, the voice of the Father was heard. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And the Holy Spirit came upon him. That began mga kabugton and ministry ni Jesus. He did not do any ministry or miracle before he was anointed. That is a picture of the humanity of Jesus as an example to all of us who would like to make an excuse that Humanity is impossible as in Jesus. The second Adam in the person of Jesus Christ, this is a, if first Adam failed, the second Adam made it. He lived a sinless life, but he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. You know when Jesus was tempted? You know, after you know, he fasted, right? And he was led by the Holy Spirit to be tempted. He was tested in the wilderness. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. And because he was led by the Holy Spirit, he was able to overcome. He, he, he spoke the right words, brothers and sisters, spoke the word of God and dealt with the temptation that came from the devil. And you know what the Bible says? Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. Every single time, Acts 10 verse 38, how God, put it there please, Acts 10 38. This is actually, uh, some, some scholars or some theologians would say, this is the best description of the ministry of Jesus, how God anointed Jesus. This is like, Jesus, three and a half years on earth, in a nutshell. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Can I ask you, if Jesus needed to be anointed by the power of the Holy Spirit, how about you? How about me? We need the Holy Spirit this year. I need the Holy Spirit this year, not only as a pastor, but as a person. I need the Holy Spirit to guide me. I need the Holy Spirit to comfort me. I need the Holy Spirit to, to remind me, you know, to warn me. The Holy Spirit can show you things to and preserve your life. He's our helper. He reminds us of things. Amen? There will be seasons in our journey that we walk in this life and we don't know what to do. But because of the deposit of the Word in our hearts, the Holy Spirit will pick it up Draw from that well of the deposit within and then stir it up and all of a sudden you remember the promise of God and instead of being lost and discouraged, now you ri or you're rising up in faith. You know what happened? The Holy Spirit reminded you of the word of Jesus. In that crucial, in that season of your life that you're feeling so lost and so weak and so discouraged, the Holy Spirit can come and comfort you. With what? With the word. With the word, the Holy Spirit comes in and, and stirs up your heart and my heart. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful for the person of the Holy Spirit? God, we need to repent because we probably talk more to Miss Google and Miss Siri than the Holy Spirit. Siri? Google? Where is the word? Anyways, praise the Lord. Salamat mga I'm with Christians today. Praise God. Hallelujah. How God anointed Jesus and Nazareth went about, uh, with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good, healing those Rest by the devil, for God was with him. Acts 1.8. Look at this. Talking about the Holy Spirit. We need him. We need him. Oh, planted by the streams of living water. But you shall receive power when. You shall receive power when. Um, NIV translation, please. You shall receive power when. King James Version, please. You will receive power when. New King James Version, please. Oh, I'm on it on. No, NIV. Did, did we go for NIV? Uh, how, about, how about the King James Version? Ah, you will receive power after. Everybody say after. 
Not before, after. When, after, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. There are some things that will not happen, happen before. There are some things that can only happen after. And the Holy Spirit is with you. There is an enablement. Come on. There is an empowerment. There is a guidance. Hallelujah. There is that assurance. There is that comfort that can only come from Him. That's why we sing in church, Lord, there are things that you alone can do. You alone will be able to do in our lives. Praise God. If you need the Holy Spirit, raise your hands. More of the Holy Spirit this year. More of the sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. More of the consciousness of the presence of the Holy Spirit. More, Lord, more. More in our lives of the recognition of your presence, of your person, of, of, your, of your ministry. You are the helper that Jesus sent. The parakletos, Lord. You are that advocate, the, the teacher, the guide, the standby, the comforter, the strengthener. You are it, Holy Spirit. You are. You are the one that empowers us, enables us to do the things, Lord, that in and of ourselves we will not be able to do. So, Lord, I thank you, Lord. When it comes to positioning this year, we will position ourselves in the right place at the right time with the right person. And we are talking about the Holy Spirit. We, we, we talk, oh, Lord, help us, help us, Lord. That we are planted by, planted by, planted by the streams of living water. Planted by the nourishment, planted by the comfort, planted by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. If you're thankful for the Holy Spirit, give Him a clap offering right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The three things that I mentioned to you about that is wrapped in this passage, Psalm 1, 1 to 6, brothers and sisters, Adina, these are the three things that you cannot afford to disconnect yourself from this year. In other words, you have, to, you have to make sure, you have to see to it that these three things, Makabuktuan, becomes your world, becomes your environment, becomes your influence, becomes your primary uh, source of wisdom and direction and guidance and advice. I'm talking about number one, the church. Blessed is the man who hangs out in the right place. Amen? Blessed is the man and the woman who hangs out with the right people. How many of you know we're talking about the church here? How many of you know we're talking about the called out ones? We are the, we are the chosen generation, a royal priesthood, holy nation. Uh, a, 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 a people who belongs to God have been called out of darkness into God's marvelous light. We are the people. We are the ecclesia. We are the called out ones. You talk about the church, we're talking about people that had been saved and redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. If you have Jesus in your heart, say Amen. Come on, if you're a believer, say amen. amen. If new life is your home church, say amen. amen. Aren't you thankful you have a church? Yeah. I know we're not a perfect church. We have a perfect Jesus, amen? Yeah. But we're all growing in Him. Yeah. Our commitment, really, our commitment by the grace of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As much as it depends on us, and of course, we, as, as much as we depend on the Holy Spirit, our commitment is this church will be a place where you can experience God. In every gathering and service, that's our mission statement, and we have just, you know, paraphrased it, but really original Amiton. Every gathering and service, the presence of God is felt. The authority of the Word of God is preached. Disciples are made, lost are saved. We don't just gather for the sake of gathering here. We understand our mission. Every time we gather, we want to make it a point that we worship Jesus when we usher His presence into this place. Because I understand, brothers and sisters, my limitations. We understand our limitations. I, sometimes I feel so undone. Just standing there in the presence of God. And I was saying, I was talking to my wife earlier, and I'm looking at people crying in the presence of God. I said, Lord, your people need you. Man, you come to the... And, and I, I'm t let me just tell you right now, I don't have what you need. I cannot meet your needs, but Jesus can. I said, Jesus can meet your needs. That's, why, that's the reason why as a pastor, sometimes we feel so undone. Thank God for the grace of God. Only the grace of God that we're able to function as pastors of new life. We're a growing church, my goodness, Lord. And people who come here, mga are not perfect people. They have needs. Come on, I mean, when was the last time you checked your face in the mirror? You're not perfect, and so are we. We are not perfect. Nobody, everybody is in the process, in a journey, on a journey right now. We're all growing in God. Come on, amen? Say amen if you're growing in God. 
That's our. That's what we highlight. We don't, you know, try to highlight mga kabuktuan, you know, failure. We we highlight progress. And, and so praise the Lord. If you've always been late in our mga services, permanently thirty minutes late, jana five minutes nala. That's progress. Amen. We celebrate that. Amen. I've talked to some people na sana Pastor Ram, you know, I'm struggling with this. I'm really struggling with this. And, you know, I'm a new Christian here in new life. I'm struggling with this. And nasi nga Pastor Ram, dati suga din ikada mo. Pero yan na, usa na la. I've heard about this testimony of this guy going to church. Nasi nga, uh, uh, going to a Bible study. Nasi nga. Uh, anybody who wants to testify? In this person who, who just came out of a Bible study said, you know, I just want to testify. To, uh, because of the goodness of the Lord right now. I just want to thank God for this victory. What victory are you talking about? I said, yeah, just very, recent, you know, on my way to our, to our life group. Uh, you know, to, to our way to our Bible study. Nakita na ako na ako mga dating mga barkada, gintagaya na ako ni Rama Kabatan. Pasalamat na lang ka ko lakabaso. Thank you, Lord, for that victory. Sana la. Amen. Bangin amo itong testimony, mga kabutan. We continue to welcome people who are or on our journey. Mama, mama, listen, listen. I'm not talking about making the church as an excuse. But you are like legitimately, sincerely wants to be transformed and be more like Jesus. And you come here and sometimes you feel guilty. God, you're in the atmosphere. You know what? Just be, just for, for people to be set free. You are not with perfect people. And if, if anything, mga kabutan, mas madasig ka dapat nasing, wow, I'm with the right group. Like, you, got, you are all messed up? Yeah, yeah, you have all dysfunctional? Yeah, we're all growing in God. Somewhere in our lives, we're dealing with some things. Let me just tell you right now, we need the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need Him. I need Him. I need Him as a person. Not only as a pastor, I need Him as a person. Listen to me, before I'm a pastor, I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God, so I want to be a child of God that honors Jesus. Amen? Colossians 1.9 prayer, that I may walk worthy. That I may be fully pleasing unto that. Don't you desire to please the Lord this year? I'm not talking about struggling, you know, being guilt-stricken. I'm talking about like you're legit, you're honest, and you're desiring, Lord, I don't know, I just want to grow in you this year. Listen to me, you need the Word of God, yes, meditation. Pursue it. Make it a part of your life. Make it a priority. You cannot just go to the Word, you know, uh, seasons in your life, but you need to make it your daily dose. The Word. The Word. You need the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. Three things you cannot disconnect yourself from this year. The church, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit. One step away from church is one step away from Christ. The church is the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, the community of believers. The Lord has set up this institution for your preservation. You may say things all you want, Masarinka, it's not a perfect place, but you know what? God is smarter than you. And He designed a place that you can thrive. He designed a place that you will be trained. You will be equipped. You will receive the instructions from the Word. Hallelujah. You can prove your faithfulness. Come on, if you're a disciple, you can't just be disciple outside. And you know, I, and what kind of a disciple are you? You need to prove it somewhere. The institution is the church of Jesus Christ. And He's coming back for a glorious church. Listen, you're looking at a church on a journey. But the church that will not stay the same. Jesus is making His church glorious. Are you here? That means that Jesus is making you glorious, changing you, transforming you from the inside out. That is the very thing that God is doing. And you know, for God to be able to do that, He wants to preserve your life. He wants to place you in a healthy environment where you can grow. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, you nor know, sit in the seat of mockers who stand in the way of sinners, but his delight is in the law. You cannot pursue the things of God if you're in the wrong place. It will be difficult and it will not be sustainable. You want to serve God? You prove it here. Man, you start being an usher here. You feel like you belong. Now you're not just a guest in your life. You cannot always just be a guest. Are you home? Is this your home? One of, one of the indicators that this is your home, are you eating here? You can't be a stranger and always eating in new life. Make up your mind. Or else you pay us. Uh, I've heard from Pastor Paul, you know, he said, you know, it's, it's funny because there are some pastors who accused me of stealing their sheep. Stealing their sheep. He said, Pastor Paul, I'm not stealing your sheep. Your sheep is eating my grass. And you better pay me, Pastor. Make up your mind. Are you home or what? You cannot be a pilgrim. 
journeying somewhere and, and you don't even know who your pastor is. I, it doesn't have to be me, but please have a pastor. And if you're eating in new life, that's a good indicator. You're kind of feeling home here. Amen? You can always be a guest. Like, I mean, in the house, in our house, we talk to people and say, you're eating here, you're sleeping here. Let's work. Amen? So everybody, everybody does something. If you're home, mga you share. Panhugas plato, mga So I encourage you, usang a way to panhugas plato in your life, shake the hands of people and just welcome them. And I say, hello, welcome to church. Pastor Ram, do I have to graduate in a Bible school? No, you don't have to. You just have to be friendly and smile. If you're not smiling a lot, please don't be in the ushers team. Maybe you need to be in the marshals ministry. Like you're mean and firm and... Amen. Do not disconnect yourself from church. Are you here? You want to be preserved? You want to be preserved? I told you earlier, mga kabugton, you know how hard it is to, to... You know how hard it is to yield to temptation if you are with the right crew? That's why, have you noticed that you have to keep things in the dark if you want to sin? Oh, come on, don't look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. That's why you have to... You know, I encourage you. Do not disconnect yourself from the pack. One sure way to be eaten by lions who are hungry is to isolate yourself. Remember, you are in the wild. We are in this world is a little bit wild. You know, pagkita ka mo mga Discovery Channel or uh, Animal Kingdom, whatever. Animal Kingdom, tama ba? Tama, tama ba? Not GU people, no, it's not GU people. Something like that, Animal Planet, whatever. Nakita ka mo ito dito nga, naging ka mga kabugtuan, isolated nga, sa maran na, nagpaharayo pa mga kabugtuan, nagto, nasa yung manan mga lion dito, lunch time. And vultures, kuno, brothers and sisters, they are just looking at something. They're looking at movements. Nakita nga ni Hiranga, you are a moving object. It gives them an idea that you're alive. So they'll not mess with you. But nakita nga ni natakatambay ka, stationary, nothing is happening. They, have, they assume you're dead. And vultures always go for the one that's not moving. Vultures are all around. Are you moving? Are you doing something? You're going to be busy this year. Please be busy with something that has eternal value. Don't just be busy and look one day, look, look back one day. What am I not? Ah, I'm busy. I'm going to be a rocking chair. I'm going to be busy. But what am I going to be busy? What am Anything of eternal value. Can I encourage you, mga kabutan? Success is not measured by how much you have. Most of the time, success is measured by how much you give. Life is not about the accumulation of things. Life is about being a vessel for God. You freely receive and then you freely give. Ang mga bulawan mga kabutan, I'm not against it. May dalat nga, wala na akong bansil mga kabutan, akong mga lulod to yan. Mga bulawan nga atong ginpapamalasan na kalibutan. Can I just be honest with you? Gintatamakan lang itong langit. Magdaradara ka ito. Di manyanit madadara langit. Pero if you try to, basig kasabang ka dito ni Pablo, mas yung Pedro, mas yung anong, daladala magkagsagbot. Sagbot dito mga kutang. Pure gold and precious stones. Have you read the book of Revelation lately? You know how the heaven is described? Sometimes we spend, you know, our affection, exert our effort, give too much love and can I encourage you? Go for something quality this year. Of quality this year. Oh, please, please. If, you, if you're a businessman, be successful. Amen. You are supposed to. And with the help of God, you know, be successful. But please be successful with pro purpose. Prosperity with a purpose. If you don't have a purpose in mind and you don't have that, you don't connect it to the kingdom of God, let me promise you right now. I promise you. You are just working for yourself or probably your family. But you want your business to mean something to you and to the kingdom of God? Connect it to God's purpose. Amen? Do not disconnect yourself from church. 
Your, your, your survival de- depends on it. Your revival depends on it. Amen. Quality life depends on it. And please, did, I did not say that. I did not, Jesus himself said it. I am building my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. One day in Ephesians 5, it says, I'm coming back for the glorious church. You better be found in a place where God is coming back to. Amen? So the church, number two, the word. Focus not on another pursuit this year. Not on meditation. Because what you put into your system affects your perception, your decision, your everything. Do not disconnect yourself from the word. Dapat all over. Ato yun mga kabutuan. Pagkita mo mo cellphone, may dito. Bible application. Bible app. Pagkita mo sa rakyan, may da, mga kabutuan. Nga tanan, pati yung CR, butangin mga kabutuan. Because most of the time, you sit there, amen? You spend more time there. So, okay, magbemedito. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Wherever you are. Masang ka, Pastor it's a little bit extreme. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Extremely good. Extremely, I'd rather be extremely healthy and extremely good and extremely strong this year. Amen? So, the church, the Word, the Holy Spirit. Stand to your feet. In between, you've got to make a decision. You've got to choose brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Essentials. Prepare for the things that God has prepared for you. Strengthen the foundation. Amen? Hugti. And mga butang you already have and you are enjoying you know, the things that God has blessed you with. Revisit your prayer life. Revisit your time with the Word. Amen? And continue to visit and be part of the church. Salamat <laughs> ang Are you thankful? Give God a clap offering right now. Hallelujah.